I don't know what I did to Linda to have to follow Jesse, but I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Jesse. Here's a funny overlap. My husband taught shop for 30 years nice. down south of Lincoln at Firth uh, Norris mm -hmm. High School, then in Omaha at Omaha South, and then out at Millard West. So come from a, a big background of teachers. My husband obviously just mentioned two sister-in-laws, two brother-in-laws in administration and, and teaching from K through 12 within Nebraska. So at any rate, um, I'm Sooth Aiden. I'm the, I'm the CEO of CRI. I started the company in 1999. We're now in the IT cluster sector, so from manufacturing to IT. So I started the company in 1999. We have about 180 employees across about 14 different states. What I want to do today is give you a good overview of the current state of IT employment, just so you get a feeling for the need and the career. Then what we found, we've met with many superintendents across the state. We've had several meetings around this IT cluster. Then what's been requested is that I give you a breadth of what careers exist in IT to kind of just open your mind to the awareness part that Linda alluded to at the beginning of what careers in IT really are today and which ones really exist. And then dive into the roles with the attempt with that to show you, again, the different roles, bringing to mind the different skills, the type of kids that might be interested in an IT career. And then we'll show some examples and wrap it up with that. So this visual is my only visual. Thanks again, Jesse. But this, <laughs> this visual is actually um, a company based in Omaha that works in the state of Nebraska that is a Farm Credit Services of America. And this is what they use to teach their business counterparts how to leverage technology and what technology does for their company. So what I'll do is let's leave it right here for a second. And in your mind, if you get one takeaway from my 10 minutes here, it's every ring represents an entirely different career path in IT. If you get nothing else, just count the rings and there's multiple different varieties of careers in IT. So what I'll do is I'll now go through them. We'll pop into the first one. And if you see this one, it's strategy and innovation. So to give you a feel for that, these are those kids that are super creative. They're kind of off the wall. You say, solve this problem. You can't believe where they go. You're kind of going, they might be a little bit off track. They might think too big. How do we ground them? Those are kids that belong in the ideation and creation of IT at this stage. They're the ones that you say, we're trying to figure something out, and you just let them go wild on the whiteboard. It's a great career. It's one of the biggest growing parts of careers. And I'll give you another example kind of going forward to the next one. So if in development of a product is a little bit of the beginning of where I'm going. So the next stage is strategy and innovation. Um, um, yeah, the, that's first stage, strategy and innovation. These crazy big people doing the strategy and the innovation of new things. The next one's the program office. So again, this is a whole nother department in IT within organizations career paths. In this area, you have project managers. Those are your kids that like to organize things, like to put them in order, then like to see what skills do we need to get that done, which Legos or whatever do we need to get that done, what's the timeline, what's the cost, they're the project manager. That's, I think people can draw correlations to manufacturing, engineering, construction and then there's also critically in this in this program office is business process improvement people they look at current processes and it applies to man manufacturing engineering or conagra downtown or anything anything you want to make an example of taking a business process looking at it from every single step so these people like to look into the weeds of every single step tear it apart and say what has to happen and improve it tear pieces out i'll give some examples of that then the next phase, an area, whole different area, and whole different career in IT, is the traditional uh, application developers. And this is application developers, people that like to program, they like to make, build things, they like to make things work, they're high logic, high, high creative also today. And there's also in here um, database administrators, people like to take the data and build it in like sets and make it organized so it's easy to use and easy to get to. So it's that high organization, very analytical, very thoughtful. They like to be slow and stuck with something for a long time and they come out with something very organized. It also is your quality assurance people and you can take whatever example you want from that. They wanna try and break it. They wanna try and sh show that you left a flaw in the thing that you built and they're gonna make sure when it's done, it's bulletproof when it gets to either your internal customer that's gonna use it or your external customer that's gonna use it. And then we go from there to the next page and it's, um, again, more software analysts. They're analyzing the way the software's being built. I don't want to get too into the weeds. These two are pretty close cousins, but there is two different career paths when you get inside of a company. They're more analyst versus program. They're analyzing how it's being built. They're looking how it's being built versus the hands-on, I'm building it. So then if we continue to go down, I'll try and move through it. Data management. 
Data warehouses are a huge deal today. People want, I was with us, number two at First National Bank for an hour and a half yesterday. They have tons of systems, a mortgage system, a lending system, a, you know, all the different systems you can imagine at a bank and save 90 places data is. They're trying to get it all in one spot. So that you can imagine in healthcare, same thing is a huge, how do we get all our data in one spot to make great decisions so we can get great healthcare products to all of us consumers. So all th these people that can help create these warehouses, which means again, they're analytical, they're very thoughtful, they're gonna be strategic and go find where all this data is and map it all together. So there's core skills here. I don't think you graduate those skills from high school, but I think there's a core set of skills that you guys probably are correlating to some of this. Security and database operations, you gotta secure it. These are the guys that are gonna make sure nobody can hack it, nobody can break it. They're, they're very, very, very analytical. They like to be that guy that says, try to break this. Ha ha, look what I did. You know, you can just picture the student. And then there's also within there um, some database architecture for secure reasons. You database architect for access, how do we get reports and things? Then you database architect for security. Very different skill sets, sounds minutia. Actually, two different career paths, totally different skill sets. So we can continue on. Now we're kind of into um, the infrastructure of your environment. And if you touch base, this again, this is a entirely different career path. You could get a two-year degree. You can actually do some of these things right out of high school, depending on the school programs, but they keep the lights on for the company. These are the guys that are managing the phone system, telecom. These are the guys that are systems admins. So they're taking all your systems, administering them, updating the operating systems, making sure it's running every day. Behind the scenes, they're, you have no idea what they're doing, but they're making sure everything's staying updated, current, not getting broke. Also, um, within here a little bit is that no, I'll get to that in a minute, but so your network people, they're building your network, they're adding your computers together, they're building all the cloud things for you, all that back room stuff. Very different skill set from your front idea guy. So again, we're thinking IT, just think of how different, completely different careers. So then if we go a little bit further, um, let's go to maybe the last two even, include that green one, because, thanks. So this tech support is one that is a continued growing field, and this has a little bit been outsourced there's been trends there that where they send it offshore. If you ever had a PC, it was broke and you got a very accented help desk on the line. But people are really bringing that back. Two reasons, you can do a lot quicker to, for help desk. But this is more that desktop technician, the kind of person that likes to solve people's problems. They're pleasant, they like to take that phone call. Say, let me understand what you ran into. It's that phone tech support. And it's very critical to keeping workforce, workforce number one, not frustrated. Who likes a frustrated environment? But keeping your workforce efficient, effective, and keeping them moving. So these tech support are lower skilled, kind of your, not the guy that wants to go build a rocket, but the guy that likes technology, likes an eight to five, likes to solve some problems, and is gonna be pretty good interacting with people, asking them questions to know what they did. So my intent here was to quickly, maybe overwhelmingly, hopefully not too much, show you that part of the awareness, like Linda pointed to, that they've been asking us in the IT cluster to do is say, Look at IT careers. It's not the guy that just programs in the basement. You talk about myths. Guy programming in the basement of the Mountain Dew, although our fridge and our development center is full of all of that stuff. We have a good dental plan. But so, so we do, that is a little bit of a myth. But if you look at it now, our guy that leads our user experience, a whole division for us on user experience, came from Kaneko Art Gallery. He's all creative design, creating mobile devices. We do tons of mobile technology, and he's leading that, and he has a complete art and user experience background. And people go, really? He's in your technical company. So I wanna give two real live examples that hopefully you can relate to one or the other to give you where this fits your life today. So IT, unemployment, it's, is typically half your unemployment. So I think 3.2 was the most recent number I saw for, for Nebraska. IT unemployment, you know, we're starving for people, can't find them. We hire about 220 people a year for our company and for others in the state of Nebraska and 60% are relocated. We were just talking about that. So we're bringing them in great for economic development. Hope they stick. We gotta make them love the community. But here's um, two examples I wanna give you uh, on where it applies to you. So if you've ever gone on Amazon and you go, you, you log in and all you do is here's the book I want. One click is their word and boom, that book is coming to you. Boom, it's downloaded. You can be in line to go on a flight by the time they tell you to shut off your device, that thing's downloaded and you're reading it at 10,000 feet until they change that law. So it's one <laughs> click, you got your book, you're on the roll. Now go back to a few years ago, what they struck, why they went to the one click is because you're driving down the road, you're gonna go to the airport and you're like, I wanted a book for my trip. Let me look, oh, if I, I have to go online, I find it, 
I go click and put in my cart. Then I go click and put my address in. Then I go over here and I put in my credit card. And then I go over here and pick my shipping. Okay, I, I, this just took 15, 20 minutes and I'm not gonna have the book for five to seven days. I can drive over here and get it. They were competing with the brick and mortar. They said, if we can make this so easy, we're gonna sell more stuff. So I think everyone has an example like that that they can probably draw from. So if you think about this, those the idea guys, we're saying, how can we make people buy more stuff? That was the problem they're solving. And then you can kind of analytically take it through these steps to see the program manager said, oh, we're, we're gonna turn it into one click. Then the next guy said, one click, now our skill set comes in. We have to map this out. Now our skill set comes in. We have to program it. Now our skill set comes in. And they're really kind of working together, but I'm trying to draw a correlation. Not one skill set does this. Another example, I was online and it's holidays, so everybody's gonna be you know, online, I would imagine, buying one or two gifts somewhere. And online at potterybarn.com, pottery buying plates. Buying plates, right below they set the table. They got the napkin rings, matching this, matching this, matching this, matching this. That's predictive analytics. That's those database guys that said, they're predicting your behavior, and that was all solved by IT. That's completely the IT people saying, how do we fill the cart of a shopping cart online? How do we predict? If you're ever looking for a good book, do you ever look at who else purchased books like that and actually buy it, or music? Last night my kid wanted to watch a movie. I've got nine, 12, and 16. Not all the same appropriate movies. So they're trying to pick a movie. They picked a movie not appropriate for nine. So I said, pick a movie on Netflix that's appropriate for the nine-year-old that you've watched, that you like. See the like movies and go from there. You know, so it's a way that we live today. Those predictive analytics, whether we realize it or not, it is actually making our lives easier and some decisions that we're making and some options that we're given. That is all through those different roles and responsibilities in IT. IT has never had a greater seat at the table in any country in the world. There used to be chief information officers. They were to make sure the computers worked. Now there's the CIO, there's the CTO, that's the chief technology officer, debatable what all that role is, but making sure you're looking for technology. There's now actually a chief data officers and chief security officers. They have four seats at the table. Finance has one, and let's not change that. So, <laughs> I don't know, nobody's representing that vertical. So at any rate, the whole point to you guys is that, you know, there's just, the, the big thing we're doing on the IT cluster is generating awareness. There, if the first year grad out of four year programs, average income is 56 to 60K, five or six job offers coming out of any of the universities locally. The two year colleges, the average income is 45 to 55K, depending on which path they took. Straight up, so our, our call to you guys is, you know, we would love to be engaged as a business community. We know many people, we're working with a lot of superintendents, we're having a lot of meetings across the state with superintendents to engage to say, how can business support you guys, support the administration, support the teachers, bring awareness to the parents and students. So we're really at the early stages of that, but um, appreciate everybody taking time to listen and, and thanks for the, the opportunity.